Welcome to What the Health? Where anything health is fair game as we tackle the trends and bust the myths about health and wellness. Here are your hosts, Dr. Dan and Angela Toro. And welcome to another What the Health podcast. I am your host, Dr. Dan, here with my co-host. Angela, how's it going, guys? <laughs> we got, I guess we'll get it out of the way. You guys know the drill by now, but we're here for informational purposes only in no way offering individualized medical advice. Always talk to your trusted health care provider before making changes to your lifestyle. So, Very good. All right. That being said. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about today? <laughs> C- cellular communication. Excellent. So, why is that important? That why is that? And we're not talking about cell phones. No, so we're not that's talking about cell. Not, that's a not, good. That's a good point. Not, no. not that type of cellular communication. No, so. the basic unit of life that is inside of our bodies. You know, that estimated fifty to a hundred trillion cells that make up uh, the bag of cells that are you and I <laughs> um, and everyone else. Uh, those cells, in order to Uh, I guess, create or promote a healthy civilization or a healthy uh, individual need to be communicating properly, right? Because if the heart cells are doing their own thing and liver cells are doing their own thing and the skin cells are doing their own thing and no one's communicating or coordinating an effort uh, into keeping the body healthy, well then that's where you get a bunch of miscommunication and you can get crazy uh, diseases start to show up. So. What the heck does that have to do with what the heck does that have, <laughs> have to do, to do with, with you? <laughs> and what can you do about it? Right, I think yeah. it's the more important question, yeah. which I think we'll get to at yeah. the end. But um, I think it's important to understand how the body is broken up and what are its ways of communicating with these cells, right? Because again, you know, we have so many different cells in our body. And we talk about this all the time, that the body is always trying to promote health. It's trying to promote adaptation. It's trying to adapt to its internal and external environment. If you cut yourself, you don't have to think about anything. I punctured my finger this morning. (laughs) I was going to say, I should sit there with your uh, Sesame um, Street band-aid. Yes, exactly. (laughs) And uh, I don't have to do anything to that puncture wound, you know, other than covering it with a band-aid. You know, again, it's going to heal itself. Uh, A little bit painful as it's doing it, but uh, it's going to heal that up and within two or three days I won't even know it's there so that's the amazingness of the body you know we uh, you know you're drinking that coffee that coffee is going to be uh, you know well spike your <laughs> spike your adrenaline for a short period hopefully. of time but <laughs> hopefully um, but again you know what you have for breakfast or lunch or dinner you know that's that those particles the, those compounds are going to be broken down in your digestive system absorbed into your bloodstream and then sent out uh, you know through your bloodstream to all 50 trillion cells and, you know, the, the breakfast that you had this morning is going to start to become skin cells, liver cells, heart cells, uh, you know, b- blood cells um, and, and become the new you. Yeah. Right. So it's like people say that you literally are what you eat and yeah. it's you people don't think about that a lot when, you know, we just think of a lot of times we just think of food related to weight. That seems to be the only time people really start to think about their diet is when they want to lose weight. Um, and that's, I think, again, I think a lot of our education system has done a disservice because that's, it does kind of talk about that with, with food being related to being related to weight. But as you just said, I mean, it's what you put in your body is it in some way is going to be broken down and, either used or has to be eliminated and and that process is going to show itself in some way so yeah and if it can't be eliminated because it's you know you're eating too much of the wrong things then it starts to get stored in areas that you don't want it to be stored and it's largely stored inside the cells exactly Um, yeah so then you become toxic exactly that's why you hear stories of people who you know start losing weight and you know they actually start increasing having all these symptoms headaches Mm -hmm. um you know because their body's literally detoxifying as they start to burn fat cells and those cells uh, come down to a, you know, a healthier, um, you know, weight or size, you know, a lot of those toxins are then released. And if you don't have a healthy way of grabbing onto those and releasing them, then uh, yes, it becomes a major issue. So again, you know, we have to get back to, you know, what we're going to talk about today is the the cellular communication. So all of these cells have to communicate and coordinate, uh, just like, you know, in in any relationship, you know, if you don't have good communication, I remember our father at uh, one point when, you know, I was very uh, early on in my interest in in women, um, you know, he talked about, well, if you're going to be in a relationship, communication is the key. Um, 
And so that, that holds true uh, to so many things in life. If you're going to be in a relationship with anything, especially a person, but especially as, uh, you know, uh, 50 trillion cells mm-hmm. that make up our body, if they don't have good communication with one another, um, then, it, again, the body can start to break down. You can start to have disease processes. So we really want to talk about what are the three main ways that the body communicates, um, and then really what can we do about optimizing uh, those methods of communication throughout the body because there are little things that we can do to help promote that communication process. So um, do you want to go through those three or do you want me to? That, that's, um, well, I mean, again, we, we there's tons of cells in the body, but when we're talking about the three specific systems that are communicating... Uh, yeah, effect, the primary yeah, role. For, for health, yeah, when we're talking about that, is, um, we're looking at the nervous system, the endocrine system, and the immune system. Yeah. And um, nervous system, you know, you hear us talk about all the time. Obviously, that's what <laughs> the, the big one that we're, you know, when you're looking at the, the spine and removing subluxations and um, as far as making your nervous system work effectively, we're, that's part of chiropractic. Um, your endocrine system is your hormones and then your immune system. People, I think, are pretty familiar with <laughs> immune system, obviously, part of processing foreign invaders and keeping you from getting sick or, as we talk about, uh, having the appropriate, <laughs> the, healthy response, the healthy response healthy to, response. yes. So having you spike a fever or, <laughs> or vomit or have inflammation or whatever is needed to clear that foreign invader. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and often I think those systems are thought about separately. You yeah. know, people, if you're, you know, constantly getting sick, you're probably going to get sent to an immune specialist to see what's going on with your, you know, immune system. Yeah, if you're, an allergist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, if you're having a lot of issues that, you know, might seem like there might be a hormone issue, you're going to get sent to an endocrinologist. If, you know, you're having issues with, you know, nerve, you know, pain or, you know, things like that. Um, you know, you'll probably get set to somebody, hopefully a chiropractor, but maybe somebody else that specializes in, in like the nervous system. So we think about those things so separately. Um, but that's one of the things that, you know, again, we're realizing more and more. And I think chiropractic is playing a big part in that is there's such a huge connection with these and I'll let you go more into, into that. But I think that just, people need to, we talk about it all the time. It's like, you can't, if you think about your, if you think about yourself and all these different like parts machine, of these, yes, yeah. it's just, that's not how people work. It's yeah. just, we are such an interconnected uh, set of systems. And so if you try to, you know, we always talk about the pillars of health, the physical, the mental, emotional, uh, the biochemical, and you can, you know, you could try to focus on one, but if the other two are, you can focus on two, if one of them's off balance, you're not going to be able to fully get to that state of health. So if one of the pillars falls, a three-legged stool exactly. does not stand. It does not. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, yeah. So I think it's important to, again, just, to, you know, understand that, you know, the, the holistic aspect of the body and how it's so intricately put together, which is why, you know, I'm, you know, and, and many people within, within my profession and, and you know, holistic healers, um, you know, we're, we're so programmed to say, Hey, this part isn't working in our body. So what do we want to do? Cut That's it out. Try to take it out, you know. We do that from such a young age, you know. People with, uh, you know, kids with inflamed tonsils or adenoids. So, uh, you know, again, rather than trying to address, well, why are they becoming chronically inflamed? And we say chronically versus acutely. You know, if you're exposed to a virus, you know, that's you're around right. your, your throat and your mouth, like for those areas to become inflamed, that's they're very highly concentrated with immune cells that are designed to fight foreign invaders or um, and keep a good balance between external and internal um, you know communication and adaptation so but we're so quick to just like say well they're, they're becoming um, inflamed all the time and swollen all the time so let's just take them out mm-hmm. um, you know I had a, an example of a I think a friend of mine who I saw on social media recently that uh, this person is uh, having to get their gallbladder out. Yeah, and you know it, it's like rather than address well, why, why is the gallbladder being uh, going into spasm? Uh, you know, there, there's no questions as to well, why is the gallbladder acting the way it is, going into spasm, causing you pain. It's the well, we'll just take it out mm-hmm. without the conversation. Because again, what do we think? Oh, the gallbladder is just a storage place for digestive enzymes. Well, those digestive <laughs> enzymes are, are necessary. Yeah. <laughs> They're important for you to be able to digest your food. Yes, your liver still makes them, but it's not going to get into your digestive tract 
as quickly as if it's stored and can be contracted and easily squirted in. So again, I always say, you know, someone who doesn't have a gallbladder, they should be on some sort of digestive enzyme supplement around the time that they're eating, especially their two biggest meals of the day, yeah. because that's going to support their digestion. And we all know it starts with digestion. If we're not yeah. digesting our food properly, then those nutrients, as we said in the beginning, don't get to the cells and don't feed the proper nutrition yeah. for the energy of the body. And if they're not getting broken down properly, it's just making the body it made it that much harder for it not just to use but then again to eliminate so what's happening it's getting those toxins stored. are getting stored somewhere yeah. and or if it's not being broken down properly then you go into like the hyperactive immune system because <laughs> yeah. you know a lot of these proteins if they're not digested and gone through the bloodstream and carried appropriately in the bloodstream yeah. well now they look like in foreign invaders so now yeah. the immune system starts reacting to those and if they get yeah. into the joint they cause arthritis if they get into um, you know the, the fat cells they cause toxicity or Mm -hmm. um, you know, or uh, increased weight gain, and you know, so go yeah. on and on and on down the yeah. list. It all works together. There's a reason we weren't born with excessive parts. We yeah. were Except born. Except the appendix. Still, <laughs> no. Juries, no, they're no. Are they have they the, figured out? It's the same thing. Yeah. And actually, there is research showing that uh, people who have their appendix taken out have increased risk of colon cancer no, really because not. it's the same thing. It's a concentration of immune cells, yeah. and, and and that's just it. We I don't really see a way around that though if you're <laughs> Well, again, gets, well again, again, and yeah. there are cases in emergency situations when those things need to be taken out. But yeah. again, you know, the emergency, oh, we have to get it out versus, okay, it's a little bit swollen. What can we do to help rectify yeah. that? And again, if you know ahead of time the history of the person and help them make changes to their lifestyle, you know, they may never get to a point where their appendix, it gets to a point where it's an emergency rupture situation. Yeah. Um, you know, again, I think there's a lot of you know cases yes. where you know gallbladders appendices uh you know tonsils are taken out under the quote-unquote emergency situation when maybe if we would have monitored for um you know a little bit longer uh that you know it could have been it could have been a different situation. But yeah. We're just, again, we're in a society, we're in a system, right? We talk about this disease care system, this disease management system. That's the problem, right? Yeah. That's the inflammation. That's the problem. So we're just going to take, take it, it out. out. Yep. So, all right, I'll get off my soapbox for a second <laughs> and talk go back to the communi communication, yeah. the cellular communication. So you mentioned the three different systems of the body, right? The, the nervous system, the endocrine system, the immune system, they all communicate to, uh, together. We know that the nervous system is the, the primary, the, the, the master, I don't want like to say, call it control system as much as it's the master coordinator. And, right, and really it's the master coordinator because of its speed of being able to recognize um, you know, different changes in the environment, both internal and external. Um, and so if you look at the nervous system, the nervous system responds um, you know, over, over milliseconds. I mean, it, it is so fast depending on what uh, nerve fibers, different nerve fibers go at different rates. But, you know, it's very, very quick to respond, uh, whereas the, the hormone system really responds over, you know, minutes. OK, it's uh, it's a little bit more of a slower um, <clears throat> change in development and then the immune system is you know really over days you know and that's where again you get so you, you recognize an invader you might not spike a, a fever immediately but maybe your tonsils get swollen you know the body starts recognizing these different things and then you know a day or two later you spike a fever and you go through that immune response and you know again a lot of diseases they have anywhere from a cycle from the initial recognition you know to the body's you know ridding of it you know you're looking at a you know average cycle of three to 14 days depending on the virus it's trying to uh, uh, to take care of. So, you know, these different <coughs> uh, systems, they have different messenger molecules, and that's the big thing. And one, of, one of the greatest books I ever read was called Molecules of Emotion mm -hmm. by Candace Pert. Um, and this was uh, recommended to me by my biochemistry professor in chiropractic school. But I read this book, and she was on the original uh, research they kind of talked about how these receptors, she was uh, studying opiate receptors um, and how these opiate receptors in the brain um, were also, the, these, these messenger uh, receptors in the brain, uh, they also had locations across different areas of the body um, and how the body responded to those opiate receptors. So 
you know, when we look at messenger molecules, it's it's the old lock and key understanding, mm -hmm. right? You have a molecule um, that's the messenger molecule, that's the signal, and that's going through the system. And then you have to have a receptor on another area, the receiver, you can think of radio signal versus, you know, trans uh, receiver. Um, you have to have an area where the messenger is sent and then the signal is received. So these different communication systems, the nervous system uses the uh, messenger molecules known as neurotransmitters, okay? And then you have the endocrine system, which uses what are called hormones, okay? And then you have the immune system, which uses the messenger molecules of cytokines. Well, what research has started to understand, again, with the vastness of the communication power within our body, it's not that nerves only communicate to nerves and hormone cells only communicate to hormone cells and immune cells only communicate with immune cells. No, what they have found is that nerve cells, neurotransmitters can, um, re can turn on signals in the hormone and the immune system and vice versa then. The, uh, the hormones uh, you know, released from uh, endocrine cells can uh, stimulate or signal to the nervous system and then the same thing with the cytokines being released from the immune cells can then stimulate the hormones and the nervous system so it's really a massive network a web communication system uh, within our body where all of these different types of cells are signaling to other types of cells uh, so that our body can you know really function in a beautiful harmony um, and, and really adapt to its environment, right? That's, yeah. that's the simplest definition of health that we talk about all the time. Our body needs to recognize changes in the environment, both internal changes and external changes, and make appropriate changes um, and, and adaptations to that environment. And the people who do that the most successfully, they're the ones that are the healthiest beings on earth. So, Clearing those communication pathways and make sure we're, we're optimizing those uh, communication signals, that is what is going to help optimize your health and well being. Yeah. So what do we do then? I guess the yeah, answer, well, what do we do then to help optimize those pathways? Because again, we can get into a dissertation that will talk, you know, there's, a, you know, again, research on this that could go on for days and days and days. There's whole conferences. In fact, there's different, um, you know, they, they've actually started calling, you know, in research, the, the, the neuroendocrine system or the neuroendocrine immune system or the psychoneuroendocrine immune system. So it's like they, they've started calling this system, this network communication within the body, um, you, you know, they, they blended these names because they see the, the massive intricacies and the cross uh, references and the, the cross communication between all of these systems. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so really, you know, we're not here to get into that, <laughs> that nitty gritty and, you know, the biochemistry of it all. But we're here to, okay, what can we do on the personal level to help optimize these communication systems? Yeah. And again, I think it comes back down to realizing that it's, now it actually it makes it more complicated where what's presenting as a hormone issue, is it really a hormone issue or is it something else? Again, if you're constantly getting sick, is it an issue with your immune system or is there something else going on? And so that's ultimately, again, it's coming back to looking at the whole body. And the one thing we talk about, and you can go listen to all, I mean, we have entire podcasts on inflammation and on diet and on, did we do one on hormones yet? I can't remember. <laughs> we <laughs> we have, we, we, yeah, we have, <laughs> um, Healthy hormones or yeah, so like basically that. all like what we talk about in all of these other podcasts is the answer. So yeah. it's about making sure that you're, you know, one, limiting the amount of toxicity you're putting in your body so that you're eliminating that, you know, the, the things that can interfere with the communication. Um, and then, yeah, addressing the areas, addressing the areas of miscommunication, which is one of the big things that chiropractic does specifically with the nervous system. But yeah. Um, that's why, you know, based off of everything we just talked about, all that interconnectedness, that's why, you know, people that come under chiropractic care and have that regular care and remove those subluxations, you know, might get sick less often, might, you know, might start to have some balance with their hormones and other, other symptoms that maybe they weren't expecting. Um, and I say might, because again, there's, it's, you know, <laughs> we're not saying you get adjusted and all of your <laughs> problems yeah, are going to go away. away. Yeah. yeah. I knew a chiropractor but, who died once. So. That's, yeah, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> but um, 
but again, by at least starting with that, getting one of the systems under control by, you know, getting the nervous system under control. And then if you, you know, you can start to have, start to see progress in the other areas as well. Um, especially if you're talking about people that are coming in battling years, you know, yeah. of, of just chronic, you know, <clears throat> chronic toxi- toxicity, t- chronic inflammation. Um, that's, you know, it's a lot to have to kind of clean up and correct, but it's all at once. Yeah. yeah. And again, doing that on a, you know, doing that without a clear uh, nervous system, without a clear functioning or uh, communicating nervous system makes it that much more difficult. I always say when you're, when you have a subluxation, you use that term already. And for, you know, if, if anyone's new to the podcast, a subluxation is a motion restriction or misalignment of the spine that interferes with the nervous system's communication. Um, it, it basically, the way I look at it is, you can go out and cut your grass with a lawnmower, okay? Um, but, you know, if you have a subluxation, that's like running your engine with the throttle on, okay? So the engine will run, but it's not gonna run nearly as efficiently, okay? It has to work a lot harder, because again, that throttle is only there to get it started, and then you kick it into, you know, high gear. But, um, you know, when you have a subluxation, it really comes down to the miscommunication. It's like static on your cell phone, okay? The messages might still go through, but they're gonna be, they're gonna be distorted, disturbed, okay? And that can lead what, what chiropractic calls dis-ease, right? It's not disease, you know, which is what medicine talks about, uh, which is a state of the body. Disease is just that. It's a lack of ease. It's a lack of communication, organization in the body. So, you know, we we look and why, you know, chiropractic has found that there is such a uh, an intimate connection because of the intimate connection between the spine and the nervous system, right? The the brain, you know, sends messages down that spinal cord and then those messages start to exit out the, um, you know, out the all the holes in the spine, what are they what they're called intervertebral foramen. But it's not just that either, because then there's also receptors we talked about. Um, again, you have to have a nerve message uh, and, a, and a receiver. You have to have a sender of the message and a receiver of the message. So if your spine is not moving properly, there are messages that are sent or not being sent up into the brain. And that actually generates more you know, electricity, kind of like a windmill generating electricity for a town. Um, the, the better the windmill moves, the more electricity is generated. The better your spine moves, uh, the better uh, signaling that's going up into the brain. It's called proprioception. Um, and so, you know, a healthy moving and a healthy aligned spine uh, is so fundamental to your health and well being that that's why we're so adamant about, you know, telling everyone start there, okay? If you start with chiropractic, again, it's not the end all be all to treating any disease condition, but it's helping put the body into a better healing state uh, so that we're going to optimize that neurological communication system. And this has been proven through, you know, the tests that we do, okay? We do uh, infrared thermal imaging, okay? So we look at temperature variation. Temperature, like everything, is controlled by your nervous system. So we are looking to see when we adjust the spine, when we start to get it moved, moving in a line better, how is that impacting your nervous system? Well, we're seeing that with changes, positive changes in temperature variation. A lot of chiropractors will use what's called surface EMG. So um, that's uh, electromyography. So they're actually looking at how are the muscles changing um, and are they going from like a, a tense, I always use the term, uh, you know, are you, you got a bag of uh, bag of pebbles in your spine or in and around the musculature uh, or, do you, or are you clay, you know, nice, uh, nice gentle rolling uh, clay in the musculature. And if you've got someone who's got a bag of pebbles or a bag of rocks in their muscle, they, they're so tight and tense all the time. Um, there's there's uh, procedures that uh, surface EMG can actually measure uh, that distortion in the musculature, which again, you know, uh, the musculature is under the direct control and tone of the nervous system. So uh, we can look at all of that and see how the body is changing. And there's there's many other uh, you know variables that you can look at and measure to see how the nervous system is changing. And different chiropractors use different things, but I always say find someone who's using those tests so that you can, you know, monitor how your system is improving over time. 
Um, so just like, you know, with medical doctors, they do a great job looking at the blood and looking at what's in the blood, looking at hormone concentrations in the blood or, um, you know, or immune concentrations in the blood or, uh, you know, different invaders. They're great at looking and analyzing the blood and then hopefully coming up with ways to help to optimize that, um, you know. And so, so that's what, if you go to the nervous system first, much of your communication will start to enhance and then you'll be able to really start to dial in well what's the you know what's the next step what's the next phase of you know helping my body get healthy and stay healthy and that's where you can then start to eliminate questions of well is this an immune problem or a hormone problem or um, you know a nervous system problem or you know again is it all tied up into one yeah. <laughs> you know one basic thing so um, so yeah, that's one way that, you know, that's the primary way that we do it, I think, is by, you know, by way of the nervous system as a foundation to your health and well-being, we get that spine moving and uh, aligned better. You're going to have better communication in the nervous system, which by way is going to really help the body just get into a better state of healing. Yeah. You know? And I think we sometimes get people that come in and they just, which is great, but they're so gung-ho, they want to, they're like, okay, well, well tell me what, what exercises to do and I want to, you know, fix my diet and all of this and blah, blah, blah. But, and sometimes, again, after looking at their, their thermal scan and their x-rays, it's like, there's a lot of things going on in the nervous system that we need to like <laughs> correct first. Yeah. And it's like, so let's get that. Like th there's, there's some people that, I mean, you'll say, let, let me work, you know, work with you for a little bit. And then once we start to get the nervous system functioning a little bit better, then yes, then you can go work with Angela and make those changes. And, and the reason for that is well, one, you just don't want people to get overwhelmed trying to do too much, much at once. Too but yeah. again, if there's that much interference in the nervous system, we know they're not going to respond to the other changes as well. So yeah. it's getting, it's taking care of like getting that under control first so that, cause you, you know, you get the people that come in, they're like, I don't understand. I've been, I've been, you know, trying to clean up my diet and exercise yeah. and I'm doing all these things and nothing, you know, it's, you know, I'm still not feeling good or I'm still, you know, in pain or I'm still not losing weight, whatever it is. And, and again, we know if there's something else going on, whether it's, you know, your hormones are out of whack or your nervous system's out of whack, whatever it is. That's the that, official diagnosis. That, that is, yes. That's that, that and being jacked up. <laughs> that's our yes. that's our official diagnosis for a lot of people. Uh, by yeah, getting that getting the things we can't see sometimes under control first is really, really going to help with um, you know, your body then being able to actually respond to the things that you may be doing. Yeah. And uh, and you might be making the right choices, but again, if you're, if that communication's not, not working, then it's just, it's like, think of like that game of, um, telephone has mm -hmm. <laughs> used to play as kids. And you know, if that, there, if there's that communication breakdown, by the time you get down to the lap, you always hated being the kid at the end too. Cause you knew you were going to say it completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but, but that's just it. It's like the message gets through, but it's a yeah. completely distorted, different message exactly. than what it is. And, it, and that's why I tell people with, you know, helping your body communicate better uh, by way of this adjustment. So I think that's the first point that we always try and get to is like, if you don't have a chiropractor, I mean, I honestly, you know, I try and say this, you know, with as much humility as possible is that I really feel that um, our society would do much better if people looked at, as their at their chiropractor as you know, their first, you know, level of, you know, health of practitioner that they went and saw first and foremost, um, you know, before their, the, you know, the medical doctor, the primary care provider. Because again, I think a lot of times we, we just, you know, look at, you know, and the medical doctors have amazing uh, tests and diagnostics mm -hmm. that they can do. But then I think a lot of times what happens is, you know, you get over inundated with information. And then I think what happens is that the step from here's all the information. Now, what do we do with it? That's where the breakdown There's starts to happen in our system, because, you know, again, in our in our sick care system, you know, the answer in medicine is drugs, drug surgery, surgery uh, you know, radiation, you know, and that's that's unfortunately that's the toolbox. That's the treatment method of medicine. I think it's gotten a little bit better in some ways, but I think there's other areas that it can be very, very detrimental. So, um, you know, looking at uh, a chiropractor as, okay, you're coming in here. Let's look to the nervous system first. 
first, since that's the master coordinating system of the body. Uh, let's get that under control, okay, as far as we can. And then once we start seeing some good positive changes there, now let's do some blood work. Now let's, yeah. uh, you know, and I'm not saying the chiropractor does that. I'm saying, you know, then, you know, you can, can work out. with a good, yeah, you can refer out. Uh, you can work with a good, um, uh, you know, integrative med medical specialist or, you know, integrative medicine, uh, functional medicine is becoming very popular in society now because, again, they're looking at trying to take this information and condense it um, and then figure out what to do with it. Can you make lifestyle changes? Mm -hmm. Do you need to add supplementation? Do you need to take away supplementation? I mean, we, we again, whole podcast on that. Oh, yeah, you know, just, the supplement, you know, some people are just like so gung ho about taking, taking, taking yeah. every supplement under the sun. It's like, wait, time out a minute. <laughs> Can we just get a good, healthy, you know, yeah. diet and then supplement from there if necessary? But, you know, when you when you go to the nervous system as the foundation, and then that starts uh, you know getting things under control and communicating better, now you can get more targeted, more specific in your approach in terms of trying to overcome a specific condition, whether it's a, a headache that's not clearing up or a digestive issue or um, you know whatever you know whatever it might be. And so again, you know you start looking at those other pillars, um, you know as you get the foundation of that nervous system firing and functioning better. Yeah. And that and that's why, you know, we had this, you know, we're still in our generational health month and that's and that's why we're so, you know, passionate about getting people in early because again it's a lot easier to find <laughs> find and correct things before you're having all these symptoms, before you're on the laundry list of medications. It's not to say that you know, we can't help at that point, but yeah. you know, if, we're, if we're trying, you know, if we're trying to do what we're doing and you're on all these medications, I mean, look, listen to every commercial for medication. They list that laundry, laundry. list of yeah. side effects at the end. Like every single medication, even, you know, an Advil has, has side has effects. Side effects. Yeah. So it's, you know, if we're, if we're now trying to battle, we, we don't know, okay, well, what do you, what's coming from your nervous system or what's just coming from these medications? The medication, yeah. exactly. And it just makes it a lot harder versus if you come in, you know, if maybe your doctor's talking about putting you on something again, what's the harm of starting chiropractic? If it doesn't work, medication's always going to be an option that's not going anywhere yeah, not going um surgery is always going to be an option you know we've uh so it's these these things other options are always going to be there and you know but if you have you know if you have your tonsils out they're not coming back yeah you know, if you yeah. it, thyroid's a big one you know people getting their thyroid um you know fried or having you know the with the medications and our medications so long that eventually it's it does destroy the thyroid and it's so it's like okay well or maybe we can try to make some of the lifestyle <laughs> changes first see if we can get that under control and then again worst case you can always well and it's not and it's not even worst case but let's look at it from a, another point of view let's say that your body does have to undergo some surgery let's say you need a hip replacement let's say you need a knee replacement because you know maybe you did some sports yeah. uh, when you were younger you know you were in an accident when you were younger and just you know that your body is just degraded that joint so bad it, it is degraded so bad that you know it's going to give you a much better quality of life well wouldn't it make sense to optimize the communication system, the nervous system of the body, if you optimize that before you undergo that procedure, then what is that gonna do in terms of your recovery and then your ability on the back end of that exactly. uh, to get yeah. through that procedure and recover from that procedure? So, and again, going back then is, you know, we can't, uh, we, we um, What's our, our tree analogy that we always use? The best time to plant a tree is uh, 20 years, years ago, ago, but next best time is today. But, you know, if we look at that from our, our kids and grandkids perspective, um, you know, how can we help them not build up this 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 debt of uh, of massive toxicity and miscommunication, distortion, disease in the body? Um, how can we help them never to get to that point? Um, and it really starts with a, a healthy foundation and a healthy nervous system. Not to mention, kids respond so beautifully to chiropractic adjustments. You know, again, you you've seen babies adjusted oh, in the office. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's <laughs> you know, they go from this like. Like, you know, pent up tension, tight distortion, uh, you know, in their system. And then they, they get this, uh, this gentle, peaceful adjustment and they just, their whole body just goes, <sighs> yeah, just <laughs> 
and adults do that too, yeah. but just you know, not quite to the it's extent not as, as, a, as, yeah. a, as an infant or toddler. So yeah. um, there is, you know, there's something to be said for getting, you know, the the master coordinating system, get it into a state of harmony, get it into a state of optimized communication, and then everything else is just going to function that much better. So then we can start being more targeted in the approach of looking to see uh, if you need uh, support with uh, with your hormones or you know looking uh, you know for support with your immune system and you know we always talk about what you need to take in terms of diet and we talk about that we don't have to go into that here because we have so many other podcasts but um, you know again good healthy diet is wonderful but if you're not getting enough sleep you know that in terms of not just hormone regulation but immune system function if you're not getting enough sleep your immune system is not going to be good or if you're chronically stressed chronically stressed yeah. absolutely yeah. Um, you know if you're constantly in that fight or flight state mm-hmm. like um, your your body is not because it, 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 and the reason is that the body is set up that way because if you are in a fight or flight if you're literally in a fight or flight for your life you don't need your immune system to be taking care you're of. Not worried about long term. Yeah, yeah, you're not worried. Yeah, because again, that's <laughs> that's days, weeks, you know, months yeah. into the future. You're not worried about you know healing an old scar, right? Because yeah. if your body is literally not going to survive the next couple <laughs> minutes of a fight or flight, who stand, cares? It yeah. doesn't matter. So you know the the energy systems of the body are literally set up for that, mm-hmm. and your nervous system is so good at being able to uh, volley back and forth between that fight or flight and rest and digest and healing state. That's what it's there for. The problem is, you know, we've we've traded our literal, you know, fight or flight, like, hey, t- saber tooth tiger jumps out of yeah. the bush. Uh, we've traded those actual threats with the mental, cycle. emotional, psychological threats. You know, the, I'm, how am I going to pay the, my the, rent? The, or su- my... the Sunday scaries. That was it's, the new term you just learned. I just this, learned about that. The, oh my the, God, I've never heard yeah, that the, before. Yeah, the Sunday scaries. That's like a new thing for our generation of people just literally literally almost going into a state of panic and anxiety on Sunday night, dreading the start of their work week because they hate their jobs that much or they're that stressful or they're that overworked, underpaid, underappreciated, whatever it is. Just these top people in these toxic work environments and um, yeah, so there's, it's literally a thing. <laughs> and that, yeah, that just boggles my mind. Again, I've been so blessed and, um, yeah, you know, being right. able to, you know, create it. And I talk about this in our, in our book too, right? The mm-hmm. design to heal. It's like, figure out what you're passionate about, right? That should literally, you know, in my mind, that should literally be the, uh, you know, our, our, our primary education system, you know, kindergarten through 12th grade. Your whole goal is to help that child figure out what they love to do, not just what they love to do, but what their strengths are and good at. And figure out then how to optimize, how do you get paid well Mm -hmm. to do it so that you can then help others do the same in their life. And, you know, so again, I've been so blessed. I'm not saying that I've never had a stressful day. Again, opening a business is very stressful. Not having an income until you're, you know, 26, 27 years old uh, is very, can be very stressful. But again, you know, I've gotten to a point, this whole concept of retirement is just foreign, um, you know, to me because I will do what I'm doing to some extent. And I think you will too, right? I mean, you're going to, you know, you're going to be helping people, um, you know, coaching people, training people to some extent for the rest of your life because yeah. it's something that you love to do. So that's what I think we need to do a better job of societally is figure out what you're passionate about and then figure out how to help others do the same, um, you know, and then again, get, get paid well to do it. And that's going to help remove the Sunday scaries, yeah. <laughs> you know, get that mental emotional state. And it's funny, you know, we can go into, you know, discussions of people who just after conversation, we don't never tell people to quit their job, but after conversations of like how this, how this is actually impacting their health and it gets very real to them, you know, over the course of a year or two, we've had people leave their jobs because they realize it's just not worth it anymore. It's yep. not worth the, the stress and strain on their health and well being. So, um, so yeah, that's <laughs> we, might, so, we might have gone a little off topic there, but again, it all, topic, but, but, it, but it does, it all comes back to, again, it's all interconnected. It's all, you know, you can't look at the body as it's not a chop shop. You can't look at parts and pieces. <laughs> it's, it really has to come down to having that holistic approach. If you really want to talk about just being healthy and not, 
you know, masking symptoms of, of disease. It's, you know, yeah. really looking at moving towards health. Yeah. Um, when you look at that then from the micro level, you know, that's the cellular communication. And, and we're talking about how your body communicates within itself. Mm-hmm. But then if you become a better communicator internally, okay, so you become healthier. Well, then how does that reflect on the relationship with your, you know, your fiance, your husband, your wife, your, uh, your kids? Okay, so now you become a better communicator, uh, you know, within the, you know, the, the, the civilization within your own household. And then if those relationships are good, that communication is good. Now that becomes, you know, you become a better neighbor, you become a better, um, you know, a better business partner. So, you know, and then you just start to see the micro can then lead to the yeah. macro in terms of we have a better, you know, we have a better civilization be- societally because we don't have, you know, this distorted uh, internal unhealthy uh, disease environment going on internally. Uh, so now that we're actually we're actually able to become better reflections of what's going on inside of us. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, you know, those people as like the happy and healthy people. It's just, you know, it could, be a, complete, it could be a complete stranger, but you, you know, it's the people that, you know, are smiling and greet you and, you know, are, are engaged. And yeah. yeah. And if we have, if we have more of that, then I think, yeah, like you said, it's just, it, it really does. It's more than just what's going on inside. It really does, you know, affect, um, the people around you, whether you realize it or not. Um, yeah. Yeah. It absolutely does. Yeah. And yeah. And there's just, there's so much research on this and, um, you know, but so it comes down to how, how do you optimize your, your cellular communication internally? And, you know, I think it starts with, you know, if you don't have a good chiropractor, get one. If you're already seeing a good chiropractor, good, keep going. And then, you know, talk about what we can do, uh, you know, to help, uh, you know, the other areas, the, the mental, emotional, uh, you know, stress management strategies, the, um, you know, the movement and, uh, you know, and the, um, you know, the, the lifestyle, the diet, uh, you know, and what you're putting into your body and how that impacts you so um hopefully that was helpful and if any of that resonated with you as always you know you can look up more of our podcasts on all the major networks uh on our website toro t-u-r-o family chiropractic.com you know we have a book we have so many freaking resources out there um you know so hopefully you enjoy us talking and uh you know we'll see you at the next one we'll see you next time thanks guys You've been listening to What the Health with Dr. Dan and Angela Toro, brought to you by Toro Family Chiropractic. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.whatthehealth.world.